I'm John McSweeney from Southern Response Earthquake Services and I'm a Liaison Manager for Southern Response. I'm Renee Walker, Head of Communications for IAG, which is the family of brands of State, NZI, BNZ, ASB and the Cooperative Bank. Yes, they are. If the insurer is project managing the rebuild for a customer, then that insurance company will provide insurance at the end of the uh, rebuild process. Also, the insured can choose to go outside the project management model and in that case, as long as the insurer has approved the rebuild, they will also offer the insurance at the end of it. So they'll approve contract works insurance during the build or your, your own builder will have the contract works insurance and it will be insured at the end of the build. So all insurers are continuing to insure existing customers but we're not taking on new risk. So at this stage, it's not possible to change insurance companies, however that may change by the time a house is built. I think it's important to understand that TC3 is not a hazard area, it's not a hazard risk. All it means is that before a new house is built, a geotechnical analysis of the ground has to be done so that the proper foundation can be designed for that particular piece of ground. So once that has been done, the house is perfectly okay and that will be insurable just like any other category of house. Going forward, TC3 homes will be very safe as well. I think there's a misperception that TC3 homes will not be safe, but they will actually, as long as they're built to the new standards, they're consentable, they'll be very resilient into the future. So that's what the consentable standards are based on, so people can be confident in their performance in any future events. So even now, if you were moving from a red zone house to a TC3 house, existing home, you could still get insurance as long as a property damage report form is filled out and your insurance company is confident with the level of damage to that home. So insurance basically is at the moment available to all areas apart from red, but in any green zone areas, insurance is available. What we do need to remember is it's an annual contract, so it's available at the moment based on the conditions it's always been available on, but we can't say what will happen into the future. Premiums and terms are likely to change in the future. It's likely to be more expensive than it is now. At IAG, we've just spent $380 million buying AMI, so we wouldn't have done that if we weren't confident that Canterbury will continue to be an insurable risk. Right across Canterbury for areas TC1, TC2 and TC3, there's no new insurances being written at the moment other than if a house is being rebuilt under the insurer's project management office. Most insurance companies are continuing to support their existing customers, so therefore if an existing customer moves from a home into a new home, their insurance will go with them. They're not taking on new risk, but they're continuing to support existing customers. That is being looked at all the time though, so as we understand more about the risk and more about what our um, total exposure is from the earthquakes, insurance companies will have more of an appetite to take on new risks, but it's just at this point in time, there's no new policies being written. Because TC is not a hazard factor, it's just a requirement that if you're going to build a house and you, you've got to do a geotechnical analysis of the ground. It's not a hazard factor. Currently, that's not one of the reasons why house insurance premiums would be higher in TC3 compared to TC1. If you have a replacement policy and you need new foundations as part of your rebuild or repair, those costs are met either by your insurer or by EQC, depending on whether your claim is over or under cap. In the majority of cases, if you have significant foundation damage, you're probably likely to be over cap, which is then dealt with by your insurer. You won't be able to design and build a house with a non-compliant foundation. The process is that, the, um, particularly in TC3, uh, a geotechnical analysis will be done on the land, and then as a result of that information, a structural engineer will design an appropriate foundation uh, to take into account the quality of that land and the sort of house that's going to be built on it. Now, that, um, that, that foundation design will then have to go to the council for approval. 
and that's where the final check will be done. And if it meets the council approval, it can be built. If it does not meet the council approval, then it's got to be um, amended or redesigned. The important thing to note also is if your foundations were compliant or consentable at the time of the build and they haven't been damaged, they're still compliant? In the green zone, you can't really just abandon a house because you still own that land. So we shouldn't see areas where there's just abandoned falling down houses. They should either be demolished by the insurance company or by the owner, but someone's still going to have an interest in that land. Under most insurance policies in New Zealand, um, houses that are damaged have to be re repaired to an as new or words to that effect standard. Now that standard is very high and most customers understand and appreciate that, that level of um, repair that is required. But in actual fact, there are a number of houses that can be repaired quite satisfactorily, safely, um, and, but not to an as new standard. So it is a difficult area because if an insurance company has paid out for a rebuild, they're entitled to, to the remains of the existing house and in most cases, it will be demolished. You won't find that insurers will leave any structurally unsound houses on a site. Anything that's unsafe has, and particularly those that are very unsafe have probably already come down, but if they are structurally unsafe, they'll be demolished by the insurance company. In the red zone, a customer can't opt to do their own demolition. The demolition is either done by Sarah or the insurance company, and we'll probably see the same across the green zone, particularly with unsafe homes. The only real issues at the moment will be red zones. Other than that, as long as an area is a green zone, then it's an insur insurable zone. Yes, and repairs or rebuilds um, will be undertaken, uh, but this has to be in line with when the customer is ready to have the repairs, pretty major repairs, or a rebuild undertaken. So they've got, say, maybe personal circumstances, and uh, they might be happy to have that slightly damaged house before they're not urgent for a rebuild, but they'll you sort of join the queue uh, because, of course, there are a lot of people with high priority needs. For those, uh, those customers that have high needs, whether they're vulnerable, whether they're elderly, whether they've got very young children, might have health issues, uh, the house might be really badly damaged, those are the people that have the priority for uh, the major repair or particularly a rebuild and uh, if they're ready with their house design and all those sorts of things they will have priority over those that don't have quite such an urgent or immediate need. So there's some added complexities for some areas including TC3 where we've needed to gather more information be it geotech, land information or floor level information before we've been able to move forward but as all of those pieces start to come into the puzzle, we're starting to see some action from insurers in those areas. Most insurance companies will have their own time frame around their rebuild program. So the important thing is that a customer speaks to their claims case manager or to whoever, whoever is managing their file and gets a time frame for themselves because we're hearing a lot of urban myths about eight year repair programs and people are starting to get really worried that they'll be at the end of that program rather than getting worked up, I would suggest talking to their claims manager and getting a time frame for their own repair or rebuild. Most insurers have new builds underway at the moment and major repairs above the EQC cap underway at the moment, uh, right across the city, including TC3. So what we've seen over the last two years is the build up to that and we're now starting to see the outcome out the other end. So we're starting to see a lot of new homes built. There's, I think we've built the equivalent of a subdivision by the end of this year. So there's starting to be some real traction in the market and that will give people increased confidence as they start to see their neighbours homes rebuilt or their home repaired. 75% of our program will be completed within three years and 100% within five, but it really is an individual case-by-case -case discussion because if we have all the geotech information available for your home and we can design foundations, then we can start the rebuild a lot quicker than if we're still waiting on all of that unknown information.
you're entitled to that information. What I think is most probably happening though, that the insurance company and the project management office has to do a lot of work to get that information together. There's a lot of um, inspection work, then uh, collecting that data, analysing it and preparing it into a form that's um, usable and understandable. And uh, I would expect that most insurance companies, when they're ready to offer a settlement to their customer, be it a repair or a rebuild, they'll have all that information together in a form that they can give to their customer. And I would expect that most would be giving it to their customers then, but it's very hard to give that sort of information with any sort of meaningfulness around it until that preliminary work has been done. Uh, but once that's all complete and ready, then certainly customers are entitled to that and they've just got to ask for it. So really what the message for people looking to buy earthquake damaged homes or to sell earthquake damaged homes is, is to make sure they know the options and they know the outcome of the home before they enter into any kind of sale and purchase agreement so they know exactly what they're entitled to. The prospective purchasers need to be aware that if a house is reasonably extensively damaged, they need to be a lot more cautious and careful and get this professional advice and confirmation from the existing insurer as to what their entitlements would be. And there may also be some other policy entitlements that they're not entitled to. So for example, if you buy a badly damaged home and you have to move out of it for the repair or rebuild process, you're unlikely to be entitled to the alternative accommodation entitlement because you've moved into that home knowing that you will need to move out for a period of time. Most insurance policies in New Zealand in one way or another cover a full replacement without a cost limitation. Some might have a cost limitation but that's one of the main options. And um, if your house is damaged and it has to be rebuilt, you can rebuild your new house on your existing site, the same site, and most policies offer an alternative site as well. So you could go and buy a section somewhere else and build your new house on the new site. Um, as well, most um, insurance policies offer an, an option whereby you take the amount of money that it would cost to rebuild your house and you use that to buy another property a complete property somewhere else. So it's a very quick way of having a claim settlement completed. If you're looking at the option of rebuilding on another site, you are responsible for purchasing that other site. You've got to have found and purchased another section somewhere else and, and offer that to your insurance company as the site that you want your new house to be built on. And that's where a lot of people will say, well, actually, that's not an option because I don't have 200 grand sitting around to buy a new piece of land. Because I think people are thinking they're going to get 200 grand from EQC for their land, whereas on average, it's going to be between five and $6,000. And so once people know that and understand how much they'll be paid by EQC for their land, then they're probably more likely to be looking at rebuilding on their current site rather than a new site.